Hi guys, it's Jess. Welcome back to the Not Carrie Bradshaw YouTube channel. In this video, I am reviewing season two, episode one of Summer House, Martha's Vineyard. It's the franchise of the show that has the black people. First of all, I did not sleep well. So today is a glasses day, so I'm so sorry if the glare of my ring light on my glasses is distracting. Your girl can't see, okay? And today was not gonna be a contact lens day because I did not sleep well. Now that the housekeeping is out of the way, let me give my disclaimer about this series because I do not think I talked about it um, last year on my channel. I am a Black American, a very proud Black American from a Black place. I am from Atlanta. As I have gotten older, I have come to understand and accept that Blackness is not a monolith. There is no one way to be a Black person. There is no one way to have a Black American experience. However, because my experience as a Black person from a Black place in the South is so specific and one that I'm so proud of, I don't always connect well with people who grew up more um, conservative than I did. Um, this group of Black people gives me that they are the Jack and Jill Blacks. I was not a Jack and Jill girl, okay? That's not how I was raised. So I said that to say, I don't know if this is a group of people that I would personally want to spend time with, but I am happy to see more Black experiences being shared with the world because we are not a monolith and all experiences are relevant and valid. But these are not people that I think I would spend time with, okay? So let's dive right in. First of all, they got a budget for a bigger house, and that's cute. But why the basement rooms? Like, was that the trade-off? Is, yeah, we got y'all a bigger house. Every time, like on reality TV, whenever there's a trip, a collective housing situation, it's always some bullshit with the rooms. And is that intentional from production or is that just like, we trying to get as many of y'all as we can in here and it's just gonna be what it's gonna be. I want to say, or I wanna think that it's intentional to start up a little drama. So all the boys are in the basement, summer camp style, except for Preston. Preston is my favorite. Preston is the one who is the most grounded um, in reality, and I appreciate his politics on a lot of things, but we'll get to Preston in a second. The other thing that um, was a, a theme throughout this episode is people not being included or invited to things outside the show. Um, Jasmine felt excluded a lot with the girls. Jasmine and Jordan are really kind of on the outs, and I, I gotta say, I'm tickled that Jasmine wasn't invited on the Jamaica trip, but I'm not surprised. Um, and then at the Vuv Clicquot, tickled that she wasn't invited, not surprised. And I got to say, I'm honestly really happy that Silas is not on this season. I hope that this gives Jasmine an opportunity to relax a little bit more because last season she was really draining. And I think that's what created a wedge between her and Jordan, between her and the other girls. I think that marriage does change you and growing up changes you and I don't see her and Jordan's friendship going back to, going back to um what it was but maybe they can evolve into something else where Jordan can better understand who Jasmine has chosen to be as a wife and in real life a mother so I believe that's why she's choosing to be sober this season and I do not like the way people handle people's sobriety on reality TV and a lot of times in real life people have a really hard time respecting people's boundaries when you say that you're not drinking that's not a time to say are you pregnant when we know what black women's maternal health is it's okay for somebody to like hold that back until they're ready to reveal that to you like that's its own thing and boundaries people if a person wanted you to know that they were pregnant they would literally tell you I also immediately felt irritated with Shanice because everyone knows that Alex does not drink. Why do you think it's cute to offer him a shot when he comes in? That's not cute. That's not funny. Shanice is immediately annoying. Immediately annoying. Um, why she always in a swimsuit? It's, I get it's Martha's Vineyard, but read the room. And nobody else got on a swimsuit but you. Now, we did see a preview of the next episode, and it looks like she has a bit of a breakdown of the fact that she can't afford clothes. 
Times are hard. Everything costs a thousand dollars. Do not get me wrong. But your solution to not being able to afford to buy clothes was just to buy a fuck ton of swimsuits. When there's, and I am not a proponent of fast fashion when you don't have to be, but if that's all your budget calls for, girl, you better slide through Zara or you're on a show. You can't go and do some stylist pools. Baby, if you need some help, reach out, slide in my comments. Like, how was that the answer here? Um, Alex don't like these people for real. I don't think Alex likes these people. And I also don't really find Alex to be very likable. I think that he's one of those guys that uses veganism and therapy and meditation as a tool of manipulation is to give himself the appearance of someone who has boundaries and is very healthy but he actually seems incredibly avoided and cut off and maybe we'll get into that a little bit more this season but Alex just does not seem like a he's not warm and fuzzy or welcoming and so I need for Summer to know that it was immediately obvious that it was some pressure with him as soon as he came in the house she was trying so hard to be hard body and i don't care about that man i don't care about that man and then when they sat down to lobster tails and tails which i think was a very interesting idea but okay um she couldn't help but bring up the fact that like he did not invite her to an event that he was hosting when she was in new york she feels like he lied about not knowing that she was there bria got an invitation he felt like everyone else was welcome to come because it was a publicized event but why did bria get a specific invitation and summer's feeling is you've been inside me so i would i deserved that let's pull up right here relationships of all kinds have to have boundaries and, and a collective understanding of what the relationship is what the friendship is whatever it is even if you are seeing someone casually you are allowed to have expectations of that person but that person should know what those expectations are and should let you know whether or not they can meet them i do not like the notion that oh if we're just sleeping together i can treat you as less than human i can treat you as someone who i don't care about my good sis courtney who you guys have seen on this channel before none of my friends watch anime has um this is a conversation that she and i have had before we don't love the idea of sleeping with a man that you can't call if you get a flat tire. Just base level. This is a person that you are sharing an intimate experience with. That person should still treat you like you have value and like you matter to them. Alex made it really clear here on the show that he was not looking for exclusivity. And it looks like he told Summer the same thing. Summer felt like we shared this intimate experience. We've been kicking it. And it's the fact that she took pictures of him and shared it with the group that they were like hanging out and he felt like that was a violation he really didn't even want people to know that they were kicking like kicking it like that i would be so embarrassed if somebody like hit me with why you putting our business out there like that like as if like i should be a secret i would have been so embarrassed i don't think either of them handled this well especially because summer was trying to deny that she had feelings even if not for him about the situation and it came out like when you try to push down how you feel about something that shit will creep out in the strangest way okay what you resist persists and that shit came right out at the dinner table um amir before i forget amir's girlfriend looks exactly like i thought that she would look and the fact that he has presented her as a very possessive person i think is really cute because it's always the girls whose men don't nobody really want, who are like, oh, I, you know, I fight off a dick. You ain't got to. You good. You are so good. You ain't got to worry. I also like how Amir was playing house mother the whole time, just cleaning up. I did not understand the fight between Bria and Preston. I think that because Preston is grieving, his emotions were a bit on edge and he didn't really have the patience for who we know Bria to typically be. Um... Again, like I said, Preston is my favorite. He's very grounded and realistic. And I respect his choice not to attend his father's funeral. I think as we get older, some of us have a better understanding that just because somebody is family does not mean that they are entitled to you. The father was alcoholic, abusive, and absent, and he tried later in life to build a relationship with Preston, but the fact that even the father's family wasn't receptive of him and his sister, that they have been excluded from things, there is no connection there. I think that for some relationships, especially parental ones, 
once it's been damaged for so long, sometimes there just is no going back. And I really admire him for having that boundary and choosing to um, grieve his father's passing the way he wanted to. We just have to have better boundaries and ways to cope with family because it can't just be that because people are family they get to do whatever they want to to you that's not a thing so kudos to preston for um choosing to handle the grief how he wanted to um so shanice is here full time this season i'm curious to see if she's going to continue to um not seek consent about her body like we'll see what happens with that um is it me or do all the light-skinned girls on this show look alike? They all look alike. It's like copy-paste, copy-paste. I think I like Noelle. I think I like Noelle. It was interesting to me. Let me see, was it Summer? or she, I think it's Summer who says that she met Noelle through a guy who she's seeing. And she said that they talked all night for two hours. Baby, which one was it? But, you know, sometimes when you meet a cool girl, another cool girl, and, like, the vibe is there, you be like, where have you been all my life? I love that kind of sisterhood. That is one of the beautiful things about womanhood, and especially about being a Black American woman. There is this, while, again, we are not a monolith, in general, in my experience, there is this shared collective just community of sisterhood, and I love seeing that. I want to know where Noelle is from in Atlanta, and the secondary question to that is always, what high school did you go to? Because I want to say that I like Noelle because she seems a little bit more grounded in reality, but she's also giving me a little bit of performativeness. I got some follow-up questions. Noelle gives me very Phaedra Parks energy, so I'm going to say for right now, I like her. We'll see what happens because it was given a little bit performative, but I I want to see. I want to see what, what she gives the rest of the season. Um, I really love that the girls looked out for Preston and made sure that he had a room and shoved all the rest of the boys off to the side. The conversation between Jasmine and Jordan was really awkward. It Jordan just doesn't seem interested in his friendship and Alex don't seem interested in nobody. So I think that's everything that I have for this first episode um okay last thing last thing last thing because again blackness is not a monolithic experience why don't the girls get braids on vacation and i know that later in the season we'll see that um jordan is having some issues with alopecia so this is no tea no shade it's just again in my experience when you go on a vacation and you know you're going to be outside and you know water is going to be at play, you know humidity is going to be at play. In general, we get our hair braided. We don't really battle humidity in a sew-in. I got questions about it. Why do we, the leave-out situation, we, we typically choose not to even deal with a leave-out situation. We choose to be like, break me down. Just out of curiosity. No judgment, just, just curious. Let me know. So that's everything for season two, episode one of Summer House, Martha's Vineyard. I will be back each week to talk about the show. And slide in the comments, let me know what you guys think of the season thus far, what you guys are expecting, and we'll talk soon.